Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Likely as not, you've all heard and read a lot about margarine lately. You see, margarine is a wholesome spread for bread our government recommends in our national nutrition program. But if you haven't tried margarine for the last few years, you'll certainly be pleasantly surprised when you taste parquet margarine, the delicious vegetable margarine that's made by Kraft. Parquet margarine is made to the same high standards of flavor and quality as Kraft's other famous food products. Parquet's flavor is so delicate and appetizing, you'll be proud to use it as a spread for bread, a flavor shortening for baking, and for pan frying, too. Just try it once and see if you don't agree that parquet margarine's delightful, satisfying flavor is just bound to please. And another thing, parquet margarine provides important nutritional elements, vitamin A, and food energy we need every day. So don't just ask your food dealer for margarine, ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who has been carrying on a feud recently with the water department. Two weeks ago, he got up a petition complaining about the water pressure. But all the action he got out of Commissioner Clanahan was a large hole dug in his front yard, which has been there ever since. This morning, we find him at the barber shop, where he's gone to carry his fight to the people, while Floyd takes a little off the sides. <laughs> Yes, sir. I told him, Clanahan, I'll give you exactly 24 hours. I said, either you get that hole fixed up, I said, or I don't pay my water bill. That's telling him. What did he say? He said, you don't pay your bill and I'll turn off your water. That's telling him. What did you say? I said, the pressure's so low now that I wouldn't know the difference. I said, go ahead and turn it off. That's telling him. What did he do then? He turned it off. (laughs) Yeah, that'll fix him. Yeah, but what am I going to do for water? Oh, come in, Mr. Peavy. You're next. Oh, I see you're busy, Floyd. I can come back. Oh, no, no. I'm just finishing up with Mr. Gildersleeve here. Won't be a minute. Sit down. Take a load off your feet. Well, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Hello, Peavy. How's the drug business? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's been a little slow. But then it always was. I guess I can't complain. Uh (laughs) Oh. Well, that cold spell we had last week must have boomed things for you. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Well, there were a lot of colds, people all over town coughing and sneezing. Yes, there were, and we did have a little flurry in cold remedies, but then the soda fountain fell off. (laughs) (laughs) Well, things are bad all over. Yeah, what's the use? Government's going to take everything we make over 25,000 a year anyway. I'm not going to kill myself. Yes. Oh, would you like a little something on it, Mr. Gildersleeve? What do you got, Floyd? Oh, you know, Wild Root, Lucky Tiger, Ed Penauds. I've got them all. i got a new one, too. Roses of Picardy. If roses of Picardy. Mmm, that sounds nice. Yeah, smell it. Mmm, give me a little of that. I put some on Mr. Peavy the other day, and he had a lot of nice comment on it, didn't you, Mr. Peavy? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the time you put that on me, Mrs. Peavy made me sleep in the guest room. You might have told me before he got it on me, Peavy. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Oh, morning, Judge. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Hello, Floyd. Peavy. Well, Gildy, I suppose you're feeling pretty good. Uh, pretty good about what? About Clanahan. The way I feel about Clanahan, I could be arrested. But don't tell me you haven't heard. Heard what? Clanahan's quit. He quit? Yep. He turned in his resignation last night. So the town is now without a water commissioner. It was without a water commissioner before Clanahan quit, too. You're right, Gildy, and you deserve all the credit for getting rid of it. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Oh, yes, you do. You got up the petition. Of course, I outlined it. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. But I don't want any credit for that. No, I can see that. I signed it, remember? So did I. We all did. But our friend Gildersleeve here is the one who circulated it. He gets the credit. Uh, 
Of course, you know who they're talking about for water commissioner now, don't you, Gildy? No, who? Oh, come on, don't be modest. What do you mean? Use your head, Gildy. Who is the obvious man for the job? <laughs> <laughs> Why, of course. It isn't official yet, so I wouldn't say anything about it, but the town council's meeting tomorrow afternoon, and they tell me it's just a formality. But, Judge, I don't even know that I'd want the job. I mean, I haven't even thought about it. I mean, Floyd, get this thing off of me. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you going to... I haven't got time. Here's a dollar. Keep the change. Dude, where's my coat? That's your hurry, Commissioner. Holy smokes. He never tipped me more than 15 cents before. <laughs> you know, some people will believe anything. <laughs> what do you mean, Judge? Yep. You can fool some of the people some of the time, and you can fool some of the people all of the time. But Gildersleeve fools himself. <laughs> you mean Mr. Gildersleeve isn't going to be water commissioner? Well, don't tell me you fell for it too, Peavy. Yeah. <laughs> some people will believe anything. But I think Mr. Gildersleeve would make a very good commissioner. What's that got to do with it? This is politics. What do you think Clanahan resigned for? Well, he has his coal business and the hay, grain, and feed. And the hardware and half his brother's plumbing business. Yes, and he also has a son-in-law that he's sick of supporting. Yeah, Harry Holdsapple. You watch. Day after tomorrow, Harry Holdsapple will be water commissioner. <laughs> Uh, uh, nothing, my dear. It's nothing, really. But you've been running. Uh, not particularly. Uh, be calm, my dear. I am calm. What is it? Uh, sit down. You better sit down, too. Oh, I'm quite all right. I think I will sit down, though. <sighs> now, tell me, my dear, what have you been doing with yourself all morning? Uncle Mort, what is it? Oh, that. It, well, Marjorie, I have a little piece of news for you. You and Leroy, where is he? Oh, he'll be back in a minute. Now, what's the news? Well, it isn't official yet, but Judge Hooker says it's practically in the bag. What? What is? Marjorie, how would you like it if your old uncle were commissioner of the waterworks? Commissioner? You mean... Uh-huh. Wonderful. Uncle Mort, that's wonderful. Uh. It's, it's wonderful. It's not as wonderful as all that. Oh, yes, it is, and you deserve it. You did the whole thing yourself. Oh, Uncle Mort, I'm so proud of you. Mm. Well, public service has its compensations, I see. Leroy! Leroy, come here, quick! What's up, Marge? Oh, are you back, Unc? Leroy, Uncle Mort's going to be water commissioner. Yeah. Well, Leroy, did you hear me? Uncle Mort's going to be water commissioner. What does it pay? <laughs> Leroy. I haven't the faintest idea what it pays, young man, and furthermore, I don't care. I've been asked to serve the community, and I intend to serve it to the best of my ability. I wonder what it does pay. <laughs> Oh, Bertie, come here. I'm coming. Yes? Bertie, guess what? Oh, I'm no good at guessing. Uncle Mort's going to be water commissioner. My goodness. If I'd known that, I'd have baked the cake. It's, well, it's not too late yet, Bertie. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to do a lot of things, Bertie. When you answer the phone, you're going to have to say, Commissioner Gildersleeve's house. Excuse me, Miss Marjorie. Residence. Oh, yeah. residence. Yeah. And we must see that the laundry puts more starch in his collar. Hey, wait a minute. I can't stand stiff collars. <laughs> that makes no difference. You're an important man now, and you've got to dress the part. You can't wear that baggy old suit another day. But this is my best suit. It's your only suit. Well, I can't wear more than one suit at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you shouldn't have to go to bed every time you have it pressed. <laughs> You're going to be a busy man. Uh, you're right there, my dear. You don't want people saying there goes Mr. Gildersleeve, the worst-dressed water commissioner in town. No, but the well-dressed man today isn't the man with pleats in his pants. It's the man with shiny elbows. In another few weeks, you aren't even going to have elbows. Uh, uh, I think you ought to go out and buy a new suit, Uncle Moore. Well, maybe you're right, my dear, but it'll have to be for the duration. And another thing, you ought to have a decent <coughs> photograph taken for the indicator vindicator. Oh, what would they want with a photograph of me? Do you think I ought to have a profile or a full face? <laughs> How about a panorama, Uncle <laughs> very good, Leroy, very good A little fresh, but we're overlooking things today oh, Come on, Uncle Mort, we've got a million things to do Let's get started now, Wait a minute, there's one thing first Remember, all of you, this is not official yet So not a word to anybody Bertie? Oh, not a word uh, Marjorie? Not a word uh, Not a word Now, uh, just slip this jacket on for size, will you, Commissioner? Uh, commissioner? Oh, well, of course, that isn't for publication yet. Uh, 
Oh, this isn't the kind of suit I had in mind. I thought maybe something like a cutaway. Something more official. No, I'm sorry, but cutaways are out. A government regulation. Uh Nobody wears cutaways anymore anyway, Uncle Moore. The young lady's right. I personally wouldn't be caught dead in one. Yes, well... How about something double-breasted, huh? Dark blue, maybe, with a pinstripe. Oh, I'm sorry, but double-breasteds are out, too. The regulations. Oh. Well, just run me up a nice (laughs) loincloth. Oh, wait a minute. There's a nice piece of material. I like that one. Let me try that one off. Uncle Moore, that's yours. That's the one you wore in here. Is it? (laughs) I always did like this suit. I think I'll stick to it. Goodbye. Oh, uh, goodbye, Commissioner. Look pleasant, please, Commissioner. Uh, Oh, Commissioner. Well, I'm getting kind of used to it. (laughs) Uh, Look this way, please. No, a little more the other way. No, now a little more this way. Hmm? Uncle Mort, you're looking cross-eyed. How can I help it? I'm looking six different ways at once. (laughs) Uh, We must try to be a little patient. Now raise your chin just a teensy bit. A chin? Which one? (laughs) (laughs) That's better. Now hold it like that while I fix this light. Uh, Hurry up, will you? My nose is itching. There. Now give me a nice big smile. Never mind the smile. Take your picture. Hold it, hold it. Oh, it's a beauty. You'll want a dozen for your friends. Thank you, Commissioner. Oh, Uncle Mort, there's something else you ought to have. Uh, What? There in the window. In the window? What would I do with a girdle? Don't answer that. (laughs) Oh, not that window. This one. See? The briefcase. I don't need a briefcase. Oh, but you will. You're going to have lots of important papers. Say, I guess that's right, Marjorie. I'd better... Ah, good morning, Mrs. Ransom. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what a small world. Uh, Why, only this morning I was trying to call you. Oh, were you indeed? Yes, I... Oh, hello, Marjorie. Hello. I was planning to invite you to dinner tonight. I'm having fried chicken. Oh, oh my. I'd love to, Mrs. Ransom. I'd love to, but... Unfortunately, my time is not my own these days. I'm having candid yams. Oh, brother. (laughs) No, I'm sorry, Leela. Pressure of official business, you know. Oh. Well, I think I'll just run in here for a minute, Uncle Mort. Will you excuse me, Mrs. Ransom? Certainly, darling. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Well, Throckmorton, if you're so frightfully busy, I guess you shouldn't be wasting your time with me. Oh, Leela, you don't understand. There's something I want to tell you, but I, I can't just yet. Well, you can always confide in me, Throckmorton. Oh, thank you, Leela. Uh, it has to do with a matter that's been uppermost in my mind for the last few weeks. Well, I can't imagine what you're talking about, Throckmorton. Well, I can tell you this much. An important decision is going to be made tomorrow that may affect my whole future. I can't imagine what that would be. Well, I'll give you a little hint. Uh, think of water. Water? Uh-huh. Lots and lots of water. Thousands of gallons a minute. Do you begin to understand? I think I do. Will you and I be there? You and I? Where? Niagara Falls! Oh! <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. If you're up on your nutrition ABCs, you know how important vitamin A and food energy are. Yes, we all need food energy and vitamin A. They're both mighty essential to good nutrition. So you'll be glad to know that an economical source of both these food elements is delicious parquet margarine, the wholesome spread for bread that's made by Kraft. Yes, parquet margarine is one of the very best energy foods you can serve. And throughout the year, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A, making it one of the most reliable year-round food sources of this important vitamin. Besides, in flavor and texture, parquet is entirely different from old-time margarines. You'll agree after one try that parquet is the margarine that tastes so deliciously good. So tomorrow, sure, ask your food dealer for a pound or two of parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, the nourishing economical spread for bread made by Kraft. And now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. After a sleepless night and a morning spent at the library reading up on waterworks, he approaches the eve of his expected triumph in a spirit of humble dedication to service. 
With the special meeting of the town council only an hour off, he's preparing a statement for the indicator of indicator. Uh, read that back to me, will you, my dear? Uh, that last. Oh, um, when interviewed, Mr. Gildersleeve said, this honor comes to me as a complete surprise. Uh, yes. Uh, but I am prepared to say at this time that I propose to give to this community. Yes. Uh, what was I going to give it? Oh, yes. A clean administration, clean management, and clean... Uh... Clean water. Clean water. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got that, Marjorie? Yes, go ahead. After a preliminary survey, I feel that I can say without fear of contradiction that no city, town, village, or hamlet from Maine to California can boast a finer, healthier, more nutritious tap water than Summerfields. Uh, let's keep it that way. Good. Now, we've got to hurry this down there if we want to catch the paper before it goes to print. I'll take it. I'll go on my bicycle. Give it to me. Oh, wait till I address the envelope. Uh, don't forget to put the photograph in. Here. Which one do you like best? They're all terrible. Is, oh, I don't know. I don't think this one is bad. It looks like Victor Mature with a mustache. <laughs> well, perhaps there is a resemblance. I can't help that. <laughs> hurry up and pick one, Uncle. I've just about got time to get down there. Oh, dear. I can't decide. I think it's between this one and me pounding my fist... And the one where I'm pouring a glass of water. Uh, maybe that's better for water commissioner, that little tie up there. Too bad he didn't get you in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Leroy, see that it gets to the editor. Don't give it to anybody else. Insist on giving it to Mr. Powers. Okay, I'm... Oh, sorry, Judge. Where's the fire? Anybody home? Oh, yes, come in, Judge. Hello, Gildy. When are you going to get around to taking your screens off? Gosh, I don't know, Judge. I've been pretty busy here lately. I guess I'm going to be a lot busier. Doing what? Well, water commissioner's no part-time job, you know. Water commi... Oh. As a matter of fact, Gildy, I uh, uh, wanted to speak to you about that. Huh? I wouldn't say too much about that if I were you. Oh, I'm keeping it quiet. But I wanted you to know, Horace, that I'm grateful to you for what you did. We all are, Jack. Wait a minute now. I didn't do anything. Oh, I know. You'll deny it, you old son of a gun. But somebody put in a good word for me with the town council, or I wouldn't have got this appointment. Guilty. All I want to say is, Judge, I hope I'll get a chance to do as much for you sometime. It was sweet of you, Judge. It, it really was. Oh, yes. yes. We've had a lot of scraps together, Horace. But when you come right down to it, well, I'd go to bat for you any time, and I know you would for me. You've proved that. I wish you'd listen to me, both of you. Just a minute. I'd like to show you something first. A little statement I got up for the indicator of indicator. You know, a sort of a speech of acceptance. I sent it down there with my photograph. Oh, my goodness. Did you make a carbon copy of that, Marjorie? I'd like to show it to the judge. Oh, I'm sorry, but Leroy took the only copy down there. You haven't sent it to the paper already. Why, of course. I would make tomorrow's edition at the same time as the announcement. You've got to stop him. Why? Yes, why? I don't know how to say this, Gildy. I blame myself. I really do. But I, I wouldn't count on that appointment too much, old man. Why not? Because you don't stand a chance of getting it. But you said yourself... Why, you told him, Josh. I know, I know, and I could bite my tongue off for doing it, but I... I never thought you'd take it that seriously, Gildy. You mean the whole thing was nothing but a joke? I'm afraid that's about the size of it, Marjorie. But I can't believe it. You wouldn't deliberately... Gildy, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I... I guess I'll... get at those screens... Uh, excuse me. Judge Hooker? Don't say it, Marjorie. You can't do that to my uncle. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm a mean old man and I hate myself. Believe me, I, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have had it happen for the world. Well, you're going to do something about it. Have you got your car here? <coughs> right outside. Well, we've got to stop Leroy before he gets to the paper with that statement. Or the, the whole town will be laughing. All right, come on. Judge? I'm going 35. We're, all... <laughs> We're almost there. Right down the block. There's Leroy. Ooh, my rubber. <laughs> Leroy! Leroy! Oh, we're too late. I know we are. Did you deliver it, Leroy? Yeah, sure. I'll give it to Mr. Powers himself. Oh, dear. Why? What's up? Well, I can't explain now. I haven't got time. But hurry home, Leroy. Uncle Morton needs you. Judge, you wait right here. I see where are you going? I'm going in to see the editor. I'll come with you. No, you won't. You've done enough. All right, Marjorie. 
Just as you say. Where's Mr. Power's office, please? Right straight ahead. Well, come in. You're Mr. Powers, aren't you? That's right. I'm Mr. Gildersleeve's niece. And go ahead and laugh. Well, now, sit down, sit down. Take it easy. Oh, I know it all seems very funny to you. Have you read it? Yes, I've read it. Well, I won't try to explain how it happened, Mr. Powers. It was a mistake, and I, I guess it seems pretty silly to you. But my uncle doesn't know very much about newspapers, and neither do I. Mm-hmm. He was just trying to do the right thing. You see... Somebody told him he was going to be appointed water commissioner. Well, I thought nobody wanted it but Harry Holdsapple. Harry Holdsapple. That's just what's wrong with this town. It's it's full of Harry Holdsapples. There aren't enough people in it like Uncle Mort. They're all trying to figure what they can get out of it instead of what they can put into it. Maybe you're right. And I'll tell you this about my uncle. He's a good guy, and, and he really would make the best water commissioner Summerfield ever had. Because it, it means a lot to him, and, and the town does, and... And he's interested in it, and he studies about it, and he just... Uh, Now, wait a minute. And another thing. Do you know he got up a petition all by himself? I know. I know all about that. Gildersleeve's a good man. Of course he is. And I'll tell you something else about him. Now, wait, young lady. You don't want to tell me. You want to tell the town council. Oh, I just wish I could. Well, they're meeting over at town hall right now. But they'd never let me in. (laughs) Well, they'll let me in. Power the press. But come on, I'll get my hat. Leroy, when I think of the countless errands I've sent you on, and how few of them you managed to complete successfully, (laughs) why did you have to deliver the goods this time? Gosh, I only did what you told me. I know, but you ought to warn me when you're going to do things like that. (laughs) How can I face these people? How can I face Mrs. Ransom? How can I even face Peavy? What am I going to do? Well, you could always join the foreign region. <laughs> this is no time for quips and sallies, young man. Well, you ask me. Yeah, but I know what I could do. I could join the army. Are you kidding? Not a bit. Oh. Service of my country, the uniform, they couldn't laugh at that. No, I couldn't. Why, George, I'll do it. I look like a million in that uniform in 1917. You look like ten million now, Unc. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sergeant. Lieutenant. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Is this where you join the Army? Well, that depends. Is this for yourself or for a friend? (laughs) Myself. I want to enlist for immediate duty overseas. Oh, I want to see the world, huh? Why don't you try the Navy? Lieutenant? I'm a captain. Eh, pardon me. <laughs> I've been recommended to the Navy, Captain. I'd like to join up. I see. How tall are you, mister? It, five feet, eight and a half. And your weight? 230. Gross or net? <laughs> That's in my shorts. Who recommended you to the Navy, mister? The Army. Oh, they did, eh? Well, why don't you go tell it to the Marines? <laughs> Oh, General? I'm just a sergeant, bud. (laughs) What's on your mind? I'm thinking of joining the Marine Corps. I I want to see some active service. What gave you that idea? Well, it's a long story. My nephew suggested the Army, but the Army suggested the Navy, and the Navy suggested the Marines. I see. How about it? Do you think you could consider me? I'm afraid not, bud, but I'll tell you what we will do. What? We'll consider the nephew. Oh! Five F. <laughs> Five F. What's that? Flat feet, fat, flabby, and forty-four. <laughs> oh well, you don't want to feel badly about it. You tried. Yeah. 
You know, Leroy, I don't suppose any man ever thinks of himself as old, even when he's 80. But I realize it today for the first time. I'm old. Oh, you're not old, Dunk. You've got a lot of good mileage left yet. Uh, they don't want men like me, Leroy. It's the 18 and 19-year-olds. They've got the courage and the pep and the endurance. It's a young man's war and a young man's world. I ought to turn myself in for scrap. <laughs> Now, don't talk like that, Unc. I know. How would you like to go to the movies? There's a swell bill at the Majestic. No. What's playing? Eagle Squadron and the Battle of Midway. <laughs> you go, Leroy. <laughs> I don't want to go, Unc. I'd rather stay here with you. Uh, Mr. Gillespie, I made some of that special coffee cake you like. Could I give you some? Uh, no, not just now. Thank you, Bertie. It's hot right out of the oven. Uh, you might leave it, Bertie. Perhaps Leroy would like a piece. No, thanks. Hey, Roy, what's the matter with your uncle? What's the matter with you? Uh, nothing, Bertie. Everything's fine. I don't know what's come over everybody in this house. Can't sell no coffee, Kate. Uh, you know what I think, Mr. Gilsey? What? I think you're worrying too much. I think it's that waterworks. You ought to give it up. Yeah. Bertie. <laughs> Bertie, go bake a cake. Doggone, I don't know. Things are so different around here. They ain't the same. Oh, there's Marjorie. Leroy, don't say anything to her about, uh, you know, the army. Okay. Dr. Moore? Uh, in here, my dear. Hey, Mr. Powers. Thank you. Dr. Moore, you know Mr. Powers of the indicators. Oh, oh, yes. I uh, just came over to congratulate you, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, Commissioner. And to thank you for that little statement you sent us. Oh, that. Mm, I don't think Uncle Moore understands. We've we just, just come, come from the from town. The town. <laughs> you tell him. Uh, we've just been to the meeting of the town council, and I'm delighted to report that your appointment went through without a single dissenting vote. You mean that I... He's water commissioner? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, good Lord, I'm so glad. The water commissioner. Commissioner of the Waterworks. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Powers, this means a lot to me. It means a lot to Summerfield. And I want you to know that the indicator is back of you 100%. Oh, thank you. Uh, have some coffee, Kate. Uh, have a glass of water. Well, don't care if I do. If water, Commissioner, wait till Judge Hooker hears about this. The old goat, he wasn't so far wrong at that. You know, he said I was the obvious man for the job. Oh, you were. Well, you think so, too? Certainly. The only other candidate had just been drafted. <laughs> You've had a pretty big day. I really think you ought to go to bed now. You're right, my dear. I guess I'll take my book to bed with me. What is that book anyway, Unc? Uh, the Lives of the Presidents. The Lives of the Presidents? What are you reading that for? I just wanted to confirm an impression. I have a distinct recollection that in 1874, William McKinley was water commissioner of Buffalo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good night, everybody. music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Bingman speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What could be more satisfying for the main dish of an autumn meal than that hearty old favorite macaroni and cheese? Yes, tender macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. It's filling, nutritious, and easy to make if you use Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. You see, Pabstead is just right for cooked cheese dishes because it melts so smoothly and blends right in with other foods. Pabstead is equally useful for sandwiches and snacks because it slices and spreads so easily. And besides being full of luscious cheese goodness, Pabstead helps provide important food values for your meals. Food energy, milk protein, the milk minerals, calcium and phosphorus, vitamin A, Pabstead has them all. You'll find hundreds of ways to use Pabstead for nourishing, time-saving meals. So serve it often. Your food dealer has it in the handy round flat package. Just ask for Pabstet, P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>